time to cook? No worries. Stop at our daily department and get all of our ready-to-eat grab-and-go options like our Michoacan-style carnitas, pork ribs, chicken wings, pork rinds, and many more. At our daily department, we offer the coolest options for the summer, like our fresh-made ceviche, agua chile, vegetarian options such as homemade guacamole, cactus salad, macaroni salad, and pico de gallo. We now offer curbside pickup at more of our locations. Visit bonitamarkets.com for more info. See you soon! Hello, I'm Asia Jade. I'm your host for tonight, and welcome to Starbase's virtual cooking show presented by La Bonita Supermarkets, a family locally owned and operated Hispanic grocery store with seven locations for your shopping convenience. I'm so excited to be here with you, and coming right in is a chop champion, Chef Thomas. Yes, he will be making a delicious Hawaiian fusion mix plate and will also be mixing up some refreshing sangria. Hi everyone, I'm excited to be here. I can't wait to show you how to make these amazing Hawaiian fusion mix plate, a delicious cucumber tomato salad to go with it as well. And don't forget the refreshing sangria. We hope that you all picked up your ingredients from La Bonita Supermarkets. And I know that there's more in your La Bonita supermarket bags than what we're cooking here, like this mosaic gelatin, a traditional Mexican dessert sponsored by Digari. So please enjoy. But before we get started, we want to thank the sponsors, La Bonita Supermarkets, Goya, Imusa, St. Remy, and Digari. We are going to ask you trivia questions for your chance to win prizes from our sponsors like a $100 gift card from La Bonita Supermarkets. So get ready to cook and win. Now it's time to start prepping and cooking, yeah? Yes. Awesome. Chef Thomas, what do we need to start with? And please, for those of you cooking at home, there are recipes in your boxes that you picked up and you can follow along here if you miss a step or if chef is going too fast or if I'm talking too fast. All right, now it's time to start prepping and cooking. Chef Thomas, what do we need to start with? And please, for those of you cooking at home, there are recipes in your boxes that you picked up and you can follow along there if you missed a step or if chef or myself is going too fast. Well, we have a wonderful assortment of vegetables here. Uh, where did you get all these vegetables? All these lovely vegetables we got from our very own sponsor of La Bonita. Fresh vegetables every day. Daily. Nice. Yeah, these tomatoes look, they look amazing. Well, this looks fun. What are we going to be making with these? So for our first dish, we're going to do our side dish, which is our our cucumber tomato salad, it has a little bit of lime juice, salt, pepper, uh, a little bit of Goya corn oil to freshen it up. And let's get started. All right, let's go. What would we uh, start with first? Um, I'm gonna cut the cucumbers first. Uh, I like to cut the ends off. Just, just, it's just a habit of mine. Okay. Because uh, the ends are ends. Yeah, we don't need <laughs> them. We don't really eat the ends. <laughs> Let me just put this right here for sure. now. And then for the cucumber, I'm gonna cut it in half down the middle. Straight down the middle. And then, I, for me, with cucumbers, I like to de-seed them. Uh, it's, it's all these seeds over here. We like, so I take a regular spoon. Okay. Uh, this is gonna be my bowl right here for all the, basically, de-seeding of the cucumber. And then if you run your spoon, the tip of the spoon, along the, like, the middle, all the seeds should come out smoothly. So basically, you get all that stuff out. Okay, we're gonna do one more to the other side. Do the same exact thing. Run it down the middle, you know, get all that flavor out of there. So is there a reason why we take the seeds out? 
Um, it's, it's preference. Uh, some people like it with the pulp, some people without. Um, it, it's like a textural thing. It's all it's basically up to you, it's your okay. preference. Um, if you wanna leave it in, that's perfectly fine as well. You're gonna turn it over, turn it over. I'm, I'm gonna cut one cucumber at a time. And then we're gonna cut on a bias. So on a bias is on a, like a, on an angle cut. Okay. So usually the end piece, you can save that for later as a little snack. And then what I like to do is uh, go on a bias cut about mm, roughly three millimeters long-ish. Okay. You know, uh, but it doesn't have to be that thin. It's, it's all up to you how thick or thin you want to cut your cucumbers. But uh, I go on a little angle. As you can see, let me just finish cutting this real quick and then I'll show you how long and uh, how different of an angle that the cucumber I'm cutting. So once you get to the end, that's another piece you can snack on as well. So for the cucumber itself, that would be a bias cut. It's a little oh, wow. long shape, it's de-seeded kind of get more more crunch and flavor. Mm -hmm. Kind of gives it like a, a nicer look to it. Yeah. You know? Very, very, um, very gourmet. And then <laughs> I'm gonna put it in the mixing bowl. And then I'm gonna start on the second cucumber. Now you're holding the knife in a particular way. Does uh, the form change when you're doing different cuts? Um, for vegetables, uh, you, you wanna kind of um, hold it at a, so we're gonna, this is the moose knife that we're using. Mm -hmm. So if you hold it in the center base, it, you have more control versus holding it at that the thing. end. Um, for for me, uh, holding it in the middle and cutting vegetables helps you control the knife better. Okay. So and also to prevent yourself from cutting your fingers off or nicking yourself, uh, it's best to curl your fingers in, your nails inwards, and use this part right here as a guide. Okay. So then it's, it's much easier. Um, it, it does take practice, years and years of practice. Um, I've been cooking for about 17 years now. Uh, but you, you learn through the way on how to cut things. Um, but the best way to teach somebody to cut a cucumber, per se, is curl your fingers in. Use your middle finger as a guide. Okay. And then you just basically run the knife straight across and then you want to cut as in a singular motion instead of a saw motion so you get cleaner cuts oh okay i've been doing it wrong this whole time <laughs> I mean, it, it's, it's 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 practice you know okay uh throughout the years like you learn different styles of cutting cooking uh basically you you find your groove like yeah. everybody everybody cuts different everybody has their own philosophy of like how to do things but You'll, you'll find your way on doing your own thing. Uh, you mean, I mean like, for instance, cutting, cutting cucumbers. Yeah, more of a, like a, I call it a helicopter chopper. Yeah, yeah like a like, chop, yeah, I'm yeah, just yeah. kind of like all over the place yeah, with yeah. it. Uh, but you know, it gets the job done. It gets the job done, <laughs> yeah. I mean, the, for however long I was cooking, this is how, how I was taught to cut cucumbers, but mm. I mean, some people leave the pit in. Yeah. Uh, it's all on preference. Okay. So, so this is how the cucumber should look. Put That's it all very in the pretty. Bowl. What are we chopping next? And then we're gonna cut the grape tomatoes. So grape tomatoes, we're gonna cut in half. So you're gonna, just for safety purposes, you're gonna hold it like that. And then basically have it on the cutting board, take your knife, same, hold it in the middle for stability and run it straight down. Mm -hmm. nice. And it should be two perfectly half pieces that are basically the same size. Yeah. I mean, if you can't get it the same size, it, it, it shouldn't be a problem, because... Yeah, I think know. in cooking perfection, when it comes to like, when you're just making something like this, mm -hmm. it's, not, it's not a necessity. Mm -hmm. I don't think that you need to be perfect. Uh, cooking, I, I believe that it is you should cook from the heart. You should cook from the you heart. From and the heart. If, it, if that means getting a little messy, that's okay too. Oh, yeah. So tell me a little bit about your background. You've obviously won Chopped. Mm -hmm. And uh, what year was that? So mm. uh, the year I won Chopped was in 2018. Okay. Uh, it was pretty hard. What yeah. you see on TV is what you get. Really? It's, it's pretty crazy. But me being born in Hawaii, 
you have like this chill, laid back feel to it. Yeah. Take it with a grain of salt and just keep pushing forward. Absolutely. That's so cool. So when with what got you into cooking? Like, what was the the aha moment for you? <laughs> so, as a as a kid, uh, I always want I always loved cooking. Like, uh, I would be in the kitchen with my my grandma, my grandpa, uh, my mom, learning how to like cook rice. That's like one thing you learn as a as a kid growing up in Hawaii is how to cook rice. Mm. Uh, I mean, I messed up a few rice in my time. <laughs> oh, so have I. But uh, <laughs> you know, it's all a learning experience. But as a as a kid, as a young age, that would be your like thing to do to help out. Would be yeah. to cook rice. Make the rice. Make the rice. Mm -hmm. But uh, and then that that just blew up for me and to what it is now. Right on. Like, okay, so. This is uh, the base to the salad. Basic okay. ingredients, you got cucumber, tomato. Uh, we're about to put the Goya corn oil in there. Uh, also uh, some salt, pepper, some lime juice for acidity, a uh, little freshness for every bite you get for this, for this dish. Absolutely. So, gonna... so how much of this oil are we going to be putting in this salad? So for the Go Goya corn oil, we'll put about uh, roughly a tablespoon, two tablespoons. Okay. Um, we're also gonna do a whole lime juice. Yeah. Um, so I'll squeeze the lime juice first. Okay. So we'll cut each end off. Now, is it important to put the acid before the oil, or does it matter? Um, uh, it doesn't really matter because we're we're mixing it in the bowl itself, so okay. it'll get incorporated, it but in general. So then we're gonna get our imusa lemon. Citrus squeezer. I really like this design. It yeah. is very nice. Nice. And then we're going to squeeze it over our salad. Oh, I could taste it already. Oh, it smells real good. Mm -hmm. These limes from La Bonita is They're fresh. fresh. Yeah. yeah, they're definitely fresh. All right, so we got the lime juice in there. OK. And then we're going to do a little bit of salt and pepper. OK. And this is just for taste, or just, is this a, like a uh, really important? For salt and pepper, you do to taste. Um, everybody has different um, taste buds, basically. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people maybe like it more acidity. They want a little bit of spice. OK. Um, but for salt and pepper, uh, for me, is always to taste, because uh, everybody has uh, different taste buds. Correct. Um, so for salt and pepper, I like to go a little heavy on pepper versus uh, salt because uh, you, ha you already have the acidity of the lime juice and tomatoes. Yeah. So then there it is. And then I'm about to put one to two tablespoons of the Goya corn oil. And then we just go like this. Oops. Yeah. OK, tablespoon. And then put this on the side. Get my Goya spatula. And then we're just going to mix it up. Now, this technique is called a folding technique. Folding technique, Got yeah. It. That's right, that's correct. Yeah. That's correct. I've done some baking. <laughs> <laughs> so you want to fold it, incorporate all the lime juice, the salt, the pepper, all, all mixed in with the tomatoes and cucumber. So once everything is incorporated, you see that every bit of vegetable is shiny from the oil. And then you can see little specks of pepper here and there. Um, we can put this in the fridge to cool down. Now we're just going to put on some saran wrap because we want to keep this nice and fresh. Yep. Cover it up nice and fresh. Yeah. I think right now would be a good time to do a trivia question. So, what year did Chef Thomas win Chopped? Make sure you put your answers in the chat box. And we can start on our next project. Yay! All right, so now that we did our cucumber tomato salad, mm -hmm. what are we going to be making next? So now we're going to prep all the vegetables for the fried rice. OK. Uh, I'm going to start off with an onion. OK. So we're going to take the onion. 
Uh, you kind of want to do like small dice. Okay. Uh, so for me, uh, there's a lot of ways to cut an onion, but uh, the way I cut an onion, you cut both ends off. So you take one end, take the other end. A lot of people like to leave uh, this step in, okay. so it keeps all the onion together because that's where everything is held together yeah. for the onion. But for me, I, I like to take both sides off. Okay. It's a lot easier for me to cut. Uh, so you take both sides off. I'm gonna cut it down the middle. So you take the onion, cut it in half, and then you're gonna take out the skin. Just kind of tear work. Tear, the tear works are gonna come soon. Oh yeah, that's why yeah, I'm standing all the way yeah. over here. I already know it's gonna come. You know what helps when uh, to to reduce um, the tears for the, from the onions for making you cry mm -hmm. is uh, you have like a cup of water, like ice water, like near you. That, really? That's what I heard. I'll try it. I'll so, definitely try it. You too. You try it at home and you let us home. know in let the chat know. box if it makes your eyes teary or not. So even with the uh, when cutting an onion, you you want to have a steady grip on your knife. Okay. So uh, you hold it in the middle. So then, for me. Uh, I like to start at one end, finish the other end, turn it to the side and cut it again. Okay. So you're going to cut about small dice all the way through. So you're going to just like cut it all the way through to the end. And then once you get all the way to the end, you're going to take your onion, put it back nicely together, turn it to its side, and now you're going to start dicing. Okay. So this is where it kind of gets a little complicated. but uh, it it's all depends on how you cut your onions. Uh, this is the way I cut my onions. Uh, everybody's different. There's no right way to cut an There's onion. There's no right way to cut an onion. So you're going to start from one end, work away about to the middle three-fourths, and then you're going to flip, it, flip over? it over. Oh, okay, so you have been yeah, cutting there them you go, correctly. There you go. So I'm going to start off cutting the onions like this. Get a nice dice going. And then at this point, you're gonna flip it to the side, right there. So you get a an, a more even even room to okay. cut. Because if you start going towards the end without flipping it, it'll be a lot harder for you to. It moves around. Yeah, it moves around. Yeah. So then I'm gonna take this, put it in my trusty mixing bowl. A little bit like this. So far, no water works. No so, water works. But we also don't have a glass of ice water, so. What helps too is uh, if you have a really sharp knife, mm. that helps Helps with the. Uh, yeah, it sounded very yeah. crunchy going through that yeah. onion. I so, mean, like, they really say fresh. Mm -hmm. Like. That and Imusa is a good company. Oh, yeah. To, to buy knives from. It's a gorgeous knife. So, you're gonna do the same with the other half of the onion. So, basically run it from one end to the other end. And then after this, you're gonna do the exact same, turn it to its side, and then run it maybe about half to three fourths. And almost there. So right about there, you're gonna kind of push all the diced onions to the side, flip it, and then you have more more space, more, more like more of a room to cutting without it flipping. And then you're basically gonna put it back in your bowl. So then uh, we're gonna be sauteing these onions uh, Look at that. for the fried rice. Okay, awesome. What are we uh, chopping up next? And then next, so next we're chopping <laughs> our garlic. Okay. You need about one whole clove. Uh, but in the whole clove, we'll probably use maybe three or four actual slivers. Okay. Um, the best way to actually do it is... It's called just to use just the palm of your palm hand. Palm of your hand and yeah. break it in. Just like so that. So it should Breaks it break apart. apart. Take it one by one. Wow, these are just really, really, really nice. nice. nice like, very fresh, very... Uh, this is probably the biggest clove I've ever seen. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so then of you're garlic. Gonna take all the, the sprout part off. Okay. And then I'm gonna kick it old school and then hit it with... You're gonna smash hit, it? Smash it with the knife. Yeah, yes. that's how my grandmother cooks. So then she just do pop. this. So, let me just show you one. So basically, you don't wanna 
put the knife towards you, you want to put it away from you. Correct. So you basically take it here, put it at the the butt end of the knife. Okay. Because if you do it at the like middle or top, it kind of can kind of go places. Okay. So then you're gonna kind of want to basically put at the oh, sure. oh, oh it's oh. slippery. It's slippery. So you're gonna hit it with the palm of hand, but make sure you have a secure grip on the knife. Okay. So it doesn't slide and cut your finger. Of course. So you're just gonna smash it. So once it's smashed. Oh, that smells lovely. You, got, you can peel all the skin off right away. See that? Nice. Easy peasy, garlic squeezy. <laughs> so then we're gonna do it to all three. And then do another one. Okay, peel that skin off. Comes right out. Comes right out, nice. right away. So then, this is where the fun part. We're gonna be mincing garlic. Okay, is uh, this where the helicopter yeah, chop comes in? Yeah, this is where in? the helicopter yeah. comes in. So Just then. Chopping it around. Okay, so what I, what I like to do before I start uh, doing like a rapid mince is mm. uh, you, you do the little trick I taught you where you curl in your fingers so you don't cut yourself. And then for this, you want to hold it towards the back of the knife. Okay. Because you want to do more of a rocking feel versus a, a chopping feel. Okay. So what you could, you could line it up all at once or you could do it one at a time. So you're going to basically rock motion and always curl your, curl your fingers so that you don't nick a nail, you don't nick your skin. Oh, I've nicked so many nails. So then you try to try to try to go as thin as possible. It'll help it'll help mince the garlic a lot faster. Okay. So then we're gonna run through the second one now. Try to get thin as possible. And then see? Pretty nice. Thin pieces, you know. So then we get last but not least. And then you're gonna run through. Okay. All right, the fun part begins. Yay! So you put all your garlic in a little bunch. This is where it gets a little crazy. You're gonna basically rock the knife. So you're gonna put your hand at the top, tip of the, uh, chop. Yep, chop helicopter it. chop. Helicopter <laughs> chop. You're gonna run it back. And then every time you run it, you, you, you want to bring the garlic forward. OK. So then, because usually all the, the larger pieces tend to move away. Move away. Okay. So you want to keep flipping, folding, run it back, run it back again. And then for the minced garlic, you don't need to mince it like fully, okay. like to where it's like super fine mince. You just want to be able to mince it to where like you have enough of that aroma floating everywhere, you know? Yes, absolutely. So then this is for the garlic. And then I'm gonna put this garlic in our little container here. Well, look right at that. Here, little super fine pieces, you know? Mm-hmm. Garlic equals love. Garlic is love. I am a huge garlic fan. I know every time a recipe calls for uh, X amount of garlic, you just put, you know, an extra handful in mm -hmm. there. Same way. All right, so this is our garlic. Wonderful. Here. All right, so we have our onions, we have our garlic, our minced garlic, and our chopped mm -hmm. onions. What is next? So now we're gonna cut the green onions. Green okay. Green onions are gonna be used for uh, garnish. Garnish? Basically. And how many are we approximately using? Um, probably about one bunch. Okay. One bunch of garlic. Uh, Green onions for garnish. Uh, I mean, if you want to use more than one green onion. I personally love green onion. I love green onion, so yeah. I like to drown my stuff in green onion. <laughs> so we're gonna, um, so you wanna give it a rocking motion as well. Oh, that looks great. You know? And then a lot of people, a lot of, like a lot of restaurants per se, they only like to use the green part of the onions, of the green onions. But for me, I like to run it all the way down to the, the light green area. To the light, Because that's where yeah. most of the flavor is, you know? Really? Because if you think about it, the root has the more most flavor. The most flavor, yeah. Interesting. Versus run it through all the way, you know, thinly as possible. Um, I'm, you don't need to do it as thin as I'm doing. But I mean, if you can, Kudos to you. Yeah. It took me 
a long time to, <laughs> to figure out. Mine always come out like very different shapes and sizes. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know. It's all about controlling how, mm. how much you cut. So then, and then you get the motion going. Um, I mean, with practice, but uh, try to get it as thin as possible. Okay. And then want to work your way all the way down. Keep moving the onions forward. So then you basically have more space to cut. Okay. All oh, these onions are smelling real good. Oh yeah. It's just like a whole new aroma mm -hmm. has now like hit hit the air. And then what well, what is a cool thing too? If you save these and you soak it in uh, water, they start to grow. Really? So you they can replant them. Onions. You can replant them. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. So then we're gonna put <laughs> the green onions in our garnish bowl that right looks here. Gorgeous. I Little love that. Then onions right here. Just like that. And then be sure when you're uh, transferring container not to rub the bottom of the knife because mm. uh, you will get cut, you know? Yes. So you try to like force the top of the knife and everything will fall in. Got it, okay. And then this is all our green onions. So basically, this would be our green onion garnish. Our green onion garnish. And then we're gonna put that to the side. Now, what's the final? Final thing to prep is uh, cilantro. Okay. With cilantro, I'm using about a whole bunch. Okay. Um, a lot of people don't like to use the stem, but stem, the stem of the cilantro actually has a lot of flavor. Okay. So most of the flavor comes in. That makes sense. Uh, we are gonna kind of rough chop it all the way through and then uh, run a knife through it again, kind of get it finely, not finely chopped, but get it kind of kind of finely. So okay, then, like mint. Mints, basically. Cool, yeah. so I know words. <laughs> <laughs> so we're gonna kind of curl the top to basically, you have a basically good grip to where you can hold it. So I'm gonna start off just like this. And then for this one, you don't need to like chop it like really fine from the beginning because you're gonna run your knife through back again. Okay. And then you're gonna do this. Okay, that should be, you know, let me go a little bit more. All right, that should be enough cilantro for, I'm gonna put this on the side. And then from this point, you're gonna run your knife through a few times back and forth so you can get all like these big little pieces. big pieces. So I'm gonna go. Helicopter chop. Helicopter chop. chop. <laughs> and then, just like how we did the garlic, you're gonna fold it in mm. to get all the other pieces out. And then for this one, you don't wanna do a full, like, full, like, mince for the cilantro, because okay. you kinda wanna keep it still a little, little larger pieces, but not too large to where, like, you're, you're choking on the stem. Yeah. But that, that's kinda like, um, pretty good size of uh, cilantro. And then for here, I'm gonna put in my little bowl. And then just like this, just like that. All right. So then right after, let's put it on the side. That's the chopped cilantro. Yeah. And then all this extra one, we'll put it into the container so we can save. Save it for later. Save it for later. Right on. So these are, this is basically the base of our- Our fried rice. Our dish. fried rice. Awesome. Well, let's get frying. Let's go. All right, so we have our minced and chopped vegetables. We also have our spices, our sesame oil and our soy sauce. We have salt and pepper, and we also have our longanisa. So what exactly is longanisa? Longanisa is a ground pork based type of dish. Uh, it's ground pork mixed in with a lot of spices. Um, people like to confuse uh, longanisa and chorizo, mm. uh, but there really isn't a difference with the same two. It's both similar items. Uh, longanisa is just in a sausage casing versus okay. chorizo, which is ground meat. It's like free form. Uh, free form, basically. Okay. So the longanisa we are using today is a trade family secret from La Bonita. Mm. Uh, since 1991, the recipe has been in the vault since then. Um, it has a lot of flavor, a lot of vinegar in it, uh, a little hint of spice, not too spicy, 
but it'll add a lot of depth and flavor to our fried rice today. Nice, awesome, well let's get cooking. I am very excited to taste this fried rice. Mm -hmm. uh, all the ingredients, uh, I'm pretty sure it's gonna turn out amazing. But before you get cooking, it's time for a trivia question. What is longanisa? Make sure to put your answer in the chat box below. So now that the pan is hot, you take your ground longanisa, mix it in with the sesame oil, get that rendered. Once in a while, you just stir it around, break the pieces up into little bite-sized pieces. And then we're gonna render as much of the flavor we can, but we're gonna save all that flavor to mix in for the fried rice. And then I'm gonna add the onion and, and the garlic right now, get that to a translucent stage. And then garlic, just a little bit of garlic here. Okay. And then we're gonna get this sauteing to a translucent stage. We just gotta wait till the onions and the garlic cook so we can add most of the rest of the ingredients. Now that the, the onions, are onions and garlic are sauteing, you have like this really nice aroma of longanisa, your sauteed onion, sauteed garlic. Uh, just gonna mix it up a bit. See how like I broke up all the little pieces of uh, chorizo into bite-sized pieces? That helps a lot when you're making a fried rice. Just going, see all the all the natural oils of the chorizo is coating the onion, turning it to like this reddish orange translucent color. That's all the flavor right there. Working it up to make this longanisa fried rice taste even better. And then right now I'm gonna crack the eggs into a bowl. Nice, gorgeous eggs. We're gonna use two eggs. Oh, that one got a triple. Like, this never happened to me before, but two egg yolks in one egg. That's a lucky guy right there. So, a little pepper. You wanna season your eggs just slightly, nothing too crazy. The chorizo can get a little salty. And then don't forget to stir your uh, longanisa onion and garlic mixture to ensure that everything is cooking evenly. And then uh, whisk up the eggs. You're gonna go in a circle motion, mix everything up gradually. So once your egg is beaten, you're gonna make a little, I call this a little well in the middle of your pot. You're gonna put this to the side and then just a little bit more sesame oil just so that the eggs don't stick to the pan. 
get that hot for a little bit. And then in the center. All right, this is a key step when you're making fried rice. You don't wanna mix everything right away. You want the egg to cook just a little bit. Let me just put this to the side so we could use our Musa rubber spatula. And then you're gonna kind of push everything to the center. You see that little kind of scrambled egg fill you see right here? You're just gonna keep pushing everything towards the middle. Try not to get uh, any of the longanisa in there. If you do, it's okay. I mean, we're mixing it anyway, but it helps uh, cook the egg evenly without overcooking or burning. And then most of the heat right now is in the center versus the sides. That's how the egg is cooking versus the longanisa is still warm but not cooking fully. And then for fried rice, you wanna keep the egg to a medium soft scramble. You don't wanna go too crazy. So at this point, see it's a little, still a little runny but still a little firm. This is when you can mix everything together. So you start to fold the chorizo in with the egg. See that, get it nice coated. So it smells really good. Wish you guys could smell this, but you guys probably are because you guys are following the steps. If I'm going too fast, please let us know. If you have any questions, type in the chat. So at this point, you got longanisa con huevos. And then from this step, you're gonna add your rice. And then we're gonna heat up the pan just a little bit more before you put the rice. This is when uh, it gets a little crazy because at this point, you gotta turn the heat to a medium heat. And then this is when we can add the soy sauce and basically most of the other ingredients. All right, in goes the rice. So. The easiest way to do it is you get a firm grip and you just start to smash the rice, kind of break the rice apart. The easiest method is the smash method, smash and twist. So at this step, you wanna kind of try to fold the chorizo, the egg, onions, garlic, mix it in with the rice. You wanna incorporate just a little bit more before you put any other ingredient because you get little little chunks like this. So you have to kind of like break it apart, smash it. That's the easiest way to incorporate fried rice the best. See this, starting to look really good. And then you kind of want to see not so much white rice. If you see a lot of clumps, try to push it down to where like it helps like break it apart. Folding method, you know? All right. So usually you take a spoon, kind of smash it down a little. It helps, helps that even more. See that? Chorizo fried rice. So at this point, most of the rice is already broken. It's getting coated with the oil from the chorizo. Smelling real nice. You're gonna season a little bit of salt and pepper. And then with the soy sauce, it's gonna drizzle just a little bit just to coat gonna make a little sizzle noise. That's how you know your pan is hot. Do a little more, a little less. Uh, it all depends on your flavor. But I used about six tablespoons, four to six tablespoons worth. And now you're gonna, so at this point, you're just gonna keep mixing. 
try to get every rice coated. See that? Smells real good. Uh, you don't want to let it sit too much. The bottom will probably start to burn. So you, you just want to keep mixing. Keep, we're almost finished with the fried rice. We just got one last ingredient to add, but the last ingredient you add, it will be the cilantro. Once you add the cilantro, you want to turn off the heat because you don't want the cilantro to wilt. You still want that freshness. So you see you got the little pieces of chorizo. So every bite you get a bite of chorizo, the little translucent onions, garlic. I'm gonna turn off the heat. At this point, we're gonna add the cilantro. Now that the heat's off, that's when we add the cilantro. Uh, it, cilantro, you can add as much or as little as you want. It's totally up to you. Um, I, for one, love a lot of cilantro. So you're gonna basically mix it in. Look at that vibrant color of the green mixing with the red, the orangeness from the oil of the chorizo. You can smell the sesame oil cooking. All right, so then it's like one big pot of goodness. So once that is done, you're gonna set this aside, put a lid on it, and then onto the next dish. Estos son los legendarios frijoles del charrito. Su especialidad, su secreto, prepararlos con frijoles pintos goya, con un sabor único y una cremosa textura, y claro, con su toque personal. Por eso son mejor conocidos como... Los frijoles de charrito. Los mejores. Con Goya, tu plato estrella te quedará mejor que nunca. Si es Goya, tiene que ser bueno. So right now I'm going to be making our cowby marinade. Uh, you're going to need one cup of soy sauce. One cup is about right here. To one cup of sugar, so that's equal parts, one in one. It's going to be a salty, sweet goodness. So there goes the sugar. One cup kind of seems like a lot of sugar, but it really isn't because it dissolves. And then you're gonna have our Goya pineapple juice. I'll give it a little shake, get it all mixed up well. And then you're gonna add that to the pot. And then from here, use one tablespoon of chili flakes. A little bit of garlic. This is the chopped garlic that we chopped earlier. We saved a little bit just for this. And then to finish it off, two tablespoons of sesame oil. Okay. Once you got all your ingredients together, you're gonna put it on the burner and then you're gonna bring it up to a boil. So now that you got your uh, sauce, your marinade going on the burner, you wanna give it a quick here. I have all the sugar kind of spread around, dissolve, making like a pineapple soy simple syrup. That would be the sauce for today's dish.
Now that it's come to a boil, we're gonna whisk it a little bit before it uh, boils over. We're gonna turn it down to a medium heat. Okay. And then you really wanna kinda low and slow type of thing. Start, it'll start caramelizing, you know? So and at this point, we're getting the garlic cooked, the flavor of the chili flakes extracted from them, mixing with pineapple juice for a little bit of tartness. And then you got saltiness of the soy sauce and then the sugar itself to sweeten everything up. So the way kalbi came to be, in Hawaii, kalbi is more of like a Korean, Hawaiian thing. Uh, it's where being in Hawaii is like a melting pot of culture. So it's like a melting pot of a sauce for, it can go with anything. You could put it with beef, chicken, uh, pork, goat, lamb, fish even. Uh, it's like an all around sauce. And then now that this is boiling a little, I'm gonna turn the heat off. And then we're gonna set this aside. This is gonna be the sauce for the glaze for the chicken and the sauce to pour over the steak. <laughs> All right, so we have the fried rice. Mm -hmm. We have the cucumber salad. Mm -hmm. What are we doing next? So what's the first step in making this steak? So we're gonna get our pan on high heat. We're gonna put a little bit of Goya corn oil in our nonstick musa pan. And then you're gonna season your steak, salt and pepper. And then you're gonna season both sides. Okay. Um, you can go a little, a little light on the seasoning because we do have uh, the sauce that we're gonna use over it. Okay. Um, when that gets hot, we're gonna start searing our steaks. Nice. So that steak is looking really good right now, um, but I wanted to always know, is it like a certain time that you need to like kiss the steak? Mm -hmm. So basically, uh, depending on how, what type of cut or how thick the steak is, basically uh, with this type of steak that we're using today, basically it takes, takes roughly two to four minutes uh, okay. for the first to get a hard sear. And then uh, when I say kiss the steak, you're basically just flipping it uh, flipping it over to the raw side and giving it maybe a one to two minute cooking time. Okay. And then you gotta pull it like right away, off right away so it stops cooking. So you're just gonna kiss it for maybe less than a minute. Okay. So, Cause then uh, you, you, you don't want it to overcook while it's resting on the, on the cutting board. Got it. So sometimes I cook it like on a grill. Mm -hmm. I don't really particularly like it because mm -hmm. it seems to be overcooked. Mm -hmm. Like I'm going for medium rare when it turns out to be well done. Well done. Okay. Yeah. So uh, what would be like some advice for so that? So basically um, if you're cooking any type of meat uh, or would want to pull it before the type you want it to be, so say you want it mid-rare, you'd pull it kind of in the rare, sec rare area, and then you would basically take it off the heat, sit in a pan, uh, transfer on cooking, what takes place is where the heat from the meat itself cooks it. Okay. So then uh, by the time it's time to slice into the meat and eat, your, perfect, your, your steak is already perfect. Okay. And it's not overcooked. Right on, okay, cool. And then, so little kiss, and then we're gonna take it off the heat, and then let it rest on the cutting board. All right. Ooh, look at that. And then, take it out. Turn off the heat. While the, re while the meat is resting, we can start to cook. Cook chicken. the chicken? Yes. Awesome. All right, so we have the steak. We have the fried rice. We have the cucumber, tomato, salad. Mm -hmm. Last but not least, Chicken thighs. Chicken thighs. What are we doing to these chicken thighs? So the chicken thighs, we're gonna give a hard sear on uh, both sides, and then we're gonna glaze that in the pan with our kabi marinade. Yay! So in our Musa nonstick pan, I'm gonna be using Goya corn oil. Just a little bit, just to coat the pan. Okay. You don't want to put too much. We're not really frying the chicken. 
going okay. to be searing. Uh, so while that's getting hot, um, we're going to be seasoning the chicken with salt and pepper. Just like the steak, we're going to season lightly, not, not too crazy, because uh, you got to remember that the sauce itself is, has a lot of flavor. Okay. So salt and pepper. You don't want to take away from that glaze. Yeah, you don't want to take from away that from, glaze. The, from the glaze. When, if you are seasoning on a plate or out of the pan, uh, the loose salt and uh, pepper tends to fall off. Okay. So that, that's why it, you can do it either or. Uh, but since we are doing chicken, I'm, I'll probably just season it in the pan. Okay, cool beans. Okay, so the pan is hot. I'm gonna start searing one side. Give it a hard sear, just like how we did the steak. Uh, I love the sound of meat searing the in the sizzle? morning. Yeah. <laughs> it's like. Oh, that's a big piece. A, this is a pretty big oh, piece. Oh man. Okay, we'll probably fit three, I think. Yep. So we have four piece. in there. Yeah. Nice. Probably the small one right here. Okay. So we got that going. Just gonna give it. With chicken, you kind of tend to want to cook it all the way through. So how long does it typically take chicken? Uh, depending on how thick the chicken thighs itself is. Okay. Um, with this kind of pork size uh, chicken thigh, it'll probably take about mm, roughly 10 to 12 minutes. Okay. Takes about a little bit of time. A little bit of time, yeah. Since, since it is like a pretty thick piece. Awesome. So with a mixed plate, because that's what you're making essentially mm -hmm. right now, is there a preference on me? Do, does it have to be steak and chicken or can it be anything else? It could be, it, it could be anything. Be, it could be pork. Um, you could do different variety of pork. Okay. Um, I mean, chicken, steak, uh, even fish. A Hawaiian mixed plate is basically like two different types of protein, uh, starch and usually like some sort of salad to go with it. Got it. So in, in Hawaii, uh, a barbecue mix plate is something common that you, you see everywhere. Yeah, I've had it. I've had it out of a food truck before. All right, that chicken is looking really good right now. I'm loving it. I'm loving the smells. The aroma is mm -hmm. very intoxicating, but we are gonna check in with our mixologist to see what we are drinking today. <laughs> While Chef is making that delicious dish, we are going to start on the sangria with JR, the former director of Mixology. JR, come on in here and get some drinks. All right, let's do it. Good evening, everybody. My name is JR Starkus. I was the former director of Mixology for Southern Glaciers Wine and Spirits. And it's my pleasure to be with you tonight to kind of work you through uh, the sangria that you have in your bag. Uh, sangrias are so easy to make, really refreshing, can be either white or red, and just kind of an abundance of fun that you can have with them, and there's a lot of different recipes. So tonight's recipe is just one of many that you can kind of create off of. Let me show you how we do this. So what we're gonna need first is a great brandy or whiskey or something along those lines. Tonight we're gonna be using St. Remy brandy, okay? We're gonna need a great wine. I suggest something dry. Sutter Home Pinot Grigio works perfectly for the recipe tonight. We're going to need some white grape juice. We're gonna need a little bit of simple syrup, some ginger ale. We're also gonna need just a touch of lemon juice, okay? So I'm gonna walk you through this ingre the ingredients and the recipe step by step, so that way you can do this for yourself with me at home. So first thing we're gonna need is a large pitcher. Now. The recipe that you have with you says something along the lines of build in a large pitcher with ice. Here's why I recommend against that, at least for tonight, unless you're drinking this all at once. When you build something over ice, your timer starts. And what I mean by that is that the ice will create dilution. And if you build over ice and you're not planning on drinking all of this sangria at one time, you're gonna have an over diluted drink after probably about 20 to 30 minutes, okay? So we don't wanna do that. We are actually going to build the drink and pour it over ice in our glass at the end. If you wanna make this again in the future, 
build it in the pitcher like I'm about to show you, and put it in the refrigerator overnight, okay? That's the best, you're gonna let all of the fruits and spices or whatever you decide to put into it infuse, and it's gonna make the sangria that much better. You don't need to do that, but it's a much more fun way to make a sangria by letting it sit overnight. The other thing I would recommend, if you have the time, is to make sure that all of your ingredients are well chilled. Keep them in the refrigerator. It's best to make a sangria as best as cold as you possibly can, okay? So, you need a large pitcher like this. Our first ingredient will be the St. Remy VSOP. I'm gonna measure this out in my bartender's measuring cup. We call it a jigger. It's gonna be a total of 12 ounces right into our pitcher. I'm gonna move this a little closer to me, okay? So we're gonna do 12 ounces directly into our pitcher. Six. Eight. I'm glad I still have math, I can still count. 10. And one more. 12. Now, if you want your best two kind of measure all of these ingredients out, like I've done here, okay? So our next ingredient, a little bit of simple syrup. We're gonna use just a half of an ounce of our simple syrup, okay? That is going to balance out our lemon juice. Now I've done five ounces of lemon juice here. Here's the trick. When you squeeze a lemon, okay, you're gonna use, obviously, your citrus press. You may have done this before, but what you wanna do is take and cut off the ends of our lemon, okay? Just a little bit, as such. Then, directly in half. Now this is gonna sound silly, because I run into this problem all the time. When you open this and put the lemon in, the open side goes down. So many people put it this side up, and uh, it squirts them in the eye, and it hurts. So, skin side down, or, or flesh side down like so, and then use your press, pressure to press the juice out, okay? Now I have a little bit of juice here. I'm just gonna add a little bit so you can see how it comes out. You don't want to over squeeze the juice. If you do that, what happens is you start to get some of the pith and the oils that make the juice even more bitter than it already is. So don't over press it, just take what the lemon gives you, okay? What I've also done is I've double strained. Do you need to double strain? No, but what I mean by that is Taking the juice and running it through like a fine mesh strainer will pull out any of the seeds that may make their way in there or even some of the pulp that makes their way in there. By double straining into a tea strainer, you just kind of remove those items so it doesn't affect any of the consistency or getting a seed in the sangria. So, five ounces of lemon juice to our 12 ounces of St. Remy VSOP and our half of an ounce of simple syrup. Next ingredient will be our Sutter Home Pinot Grigio. 12 ounces of Sutter Home Pinot Grigio will be perfect. Um, when you make this, if you decide that you want to add more, you can always add more, okay? Last, our ingredient, not last, actually, our next to last ingredient will be our white grape juice. You're gonna do seven ounces of white grape juice. The other advantage to building this drink as well is when you're building it without ice, you're not starting any of the timer, so when you get distracted by your kids at home or what's on television um, or maybe whatever you're cooking as well because you're doing this alongside chef at the same time, this will not dilute for you and you can come back to it whenever you're ready. Just remember what you put into it. Our last ingredient is going to be our ginger ale, okay? I have 28 ounces of ginger ale. We're gonna put directly into our sangria. Okay. Now, for the fun part, right? The fun part of any of this is garnish. You have pears, you have apples, right? And you have lemons or limes or whatever you have at home. You see I've cut up a whole bunch of different garnishes here. You can really have as much fun as you want with it. I have raspberries, I have blueberries, I have sliced grapes, sliced strawberries, oranges, lemons, uh, limes, pears, apples, whatever you want. It's kind of like a Bloody Mary, right? Have fun with the garnishes, add what you like, take out what you don't like. There's not anything set here, okay? It's just a lot of fun. Once you get the recipe down, you're good to go. So, I will cut for you a pear, okay? So, I am gonna just kind of slice off the edge of the pear, like so, and you can do it on both sides, you can do it on all four sides, and you can add as much or as little pear as you like, or, like I just mentioned, 
completely omit it if you don't like pear at all, okay? So what I would recommend you do is slice it into little cubes. So kind of slice, chef is gonna be making fun of me as my uh, cutting board slides around, but if you cut it lengthwise, and then just kind of cut it again, to give yourself little cubes, put it right into your sangria, and by doing this, you have now created a little bit of of fun when you pour it into your glass later as it will eventually get into your mouth and be little, some, some little bits of fruit that you can chew on. So I'll do it one more time here. Because I, while you don't have all these things, I'm gonna add a little bit more and the reason I wanted to do that is because I like color. So I'm gonna add a bunch of color to our sangria. You would cut your apple, for instance, the exact same way. Green apple, red apple, Fuji apple, doesn't matter, anything you like. Okay. All right, so we have more pear if we decide to add it later. Now, this is half of a lemon and one whole lime that I've just cut into quarters. We'll add that right to it. We will add half of an orange and about four strawberries that I've just sliced into circles. Can add that right to this as well. And you don't even have to cut them in circles like this. You could cut it into cubes or whatever, whatever makes sense for you. Okay. Then, of course, I'll add my sliced grapes. This could be green grapes, it can be red grapes, some blueberries, raspberries, everything directly into our pitcher. If you're making this night before, at this point, okay, everything would go into the refrigerator. You can even, if you're making it the night before, omit the ginger ale because it's a sparkling element and you don't want it to go flat. So you could add the ginger ale just before you serve. But since we're making this for everybody tonight, ginger ale's in the mixture. So, at this point, our drink is done. We can now add some ice to our glass. So I'm gonna invite everybody back onto stage with me if you don't mind coming back up. I'm gonna give this a little stir just to kind of incorporate all the ingredients. We will add a little bit of ice. Here we go, add some ice to our glass. Now, when you're adding ice to the glass, another key, because we're putting all this fresh fruit, maybe you don't fill it all the way, okay? We wanna give ourselves a little bit of extra room. Pardon me, chef. You give yourself a little extra room on top just so you, you, know, you kinda don't spill over. The larger the mouth of the glass, the better, okay? And you just kinda take what you get when you pour the glass in there. And you can even pick out some of the fruit as well. can use one of these little fancy straws right here. I'll show you one of these little guys right here. You have something to kind of scoop the fruit out later, right? Right in the glass. And there you have it. Thank you. It. Enjoy your sangria. Cheers to you. Thanks for showing up tonight. We appreciate you. Enjoy your sangria. Oh, that's good. That's real good. Mm -hmm. It's trivia time. What was the color? of the sangria. First person to answer right in the chat box wins. Good luck.
Oh my gosh, how was that sangria? Oh, that sangria was amazing. Very light, very refreshing. Mm -hmm. uh, the it, fruits. The fruits, yeah, they're yep. beautiful, man. All right, so we've been cooking this chicken for quite some time, about what, uh, you'd say 10 minutes, 10, or give or take? 10, 12 minutes. Okay. And then I'm about to flip it to give, kiss the other side Ooh, to give it that. another two minutes to cook. Wow, that looks great. So then it'll cook evenly. See a little crust on both sides. And then give this about another two minutes and then we're gonna add the glaze to it. Yum, as a glaze, awesome. And so we're gonna be cooking it in the chicken? Yes. Okay, yes. awesome. This. Oh, bangle. look at that. Pick this out. Wow. Come on, chicken juice. That chicken juice, it speaks to me. <laughs> okay, we're gonna let that kind of Look at that, sit look at that bit. color just. All right, so chicken is back in the pan. And what are we about to do now? We're about to glaze it with the cowbee glaze. It's our lovely cowbee glaze. Before you uh, put the glaze in the pan, you want to give it a little mix. Okay. Because uh, oil and liquid, other type of water don't mix good. So basically, you're gonna just like this. Oh wow, that looks great. Yeah, just a little bit over the top. So you say it's a reduction, so you obviously don't need to put that much in there? No. Okay. Because uh, basically, let the heat reduce this itself, and then the chicken itself will kind of coat with the cowbee itself, so then uh, you don't need too much. If you put too much, the longer it takes to, for it to reduce. Got it. So you, just enough to like, not submerge, but coat the bottom of the pan. So then once in a while you like flip it over. So then one side gets coated, other side, kind of like you're like basting basically. Oh, okay. So it's similar to basting. I've done that to a turkey. There we go. <laughs> then you're just gonna, we're gonna wait till it boils. And then once it starts to boil, it starts splashing a little bit because it is liquid in a small, small pan. Mm -hmm. So there's like, a lot of like room for uh, the liquid to like splash around, but it's okay. Yeah. It's okay. It smells great. I really wish you guys could smell this because it smells fantastic. Thank you to our sponsor, Musa, for mm -hmm. supplying us with all our kitchen utensils and kitchen needs. Yeah. Making it easy in the and kitchen. We appreciate it. Flip it one more time. So it's like an even coat on both sides. Okay. For the glaze. All right, while we are letting this reduce, check out this video by our wonderful sponsor, Dagari, and their dessert gelatin. All right, while we're finishing up and starting plating, check out this video by our wonderful sponsor, Dagari, and their gelatin dessert. <laughs> Start cutting the steak. <clears throat> so for the steak, I'm just gonna so I'm gonna cut it in half. Okay. Just in half, and then you're gonna put that. You're gonna cut piece by piece. Now it's typical in a mixed plate to have your meat already cut up for you. Yes. Right. Yes. Okay. So that's like a. Like, a, it's an easy, like, you can get a mixed bite of, like, chicken and beef and rice at the same time. Mm -hmm. You don't need, like, a, a knife to cut anything. Okay. It's a good thing about, like, a Hawaiian barbecue mix plate. You just grab whatever you want, salad, mix it with, like, the beef and the chicken, and get all in one bite. Oh, yeah. So you got this. Then I'm going to transfer this one here. I'm going to do the same for this steak, but I'm going to transfer this one 
here on this plate so we have more room so let me just put this right here on the side we have a meat simmer that we use in hawaii similar to this it's called pipikala i've heard of this so it's like um like the way they do it is like a sort of like a cure as well they they marinate it in uh, some sort of marinade and they hang the meat to dry so it's kind of similar to like a smoked meat but in a way it's like dried but then pan seared so we got steak cut now time to cut into the chicken man that chicken looks amazing look at that look at this glaze that's just happening all over this cowboy glaze beautiful so this thing is hot has like a caramel like glaze to it because mm -hmm. of all that soy. So it's a little hot. And you just want to run through the chicken. It basically falls apart as basically you cut it. It falls into apart it. as you cut it. It's so tender, still juicy with the glaze. All right, yep. You can feel like the sugar mm -hmm. is like coated on top of the, this, the chicken. Yeah. So it's like, has that like honey sticky feel to it it's what it looks like it looks like a, a honey glaze almost yeah so the chicken's done the steak is done the fried rice is done the cucumber salad is done how are we putting all this together all right so when whenever you're plating you always want to start off with the heavy objects first and this matter is going to be the fried rice okay and then we're going to follow with a little bit of the protein and finish it off with the salad. Wonderful, sounds good. Okay, when you're plating this at home, you can play however you want, um, but this is how we're gonna plate it here. So you're gonna take one side, I'm gonna take it to the one end, scoop, scoop, scoop. All right, one side, this is the second one. I do like the colors in this rice. As a Definitely gives it a nice little vibrant. vibrant. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. Got the green, the red, the pop with the orange. Pop of the orange. It's all natural coloring from the uh, longanisa. Yeah, absolutely. Which is why I also like longanisa because it does add like a nice little color to mm -hmm. whatever you're putting into it. Oh, it smells delicious. The aromas. You can are see amazing. the. The cilantro is still mm -hmm. brightly green, not wilted. Yeah, I'm a big fan of color um, in cooking. You, you know they say, you eat with your eyes before you eat with your mouth. Absolutely, so it has to attract you, obviously. Okay, so here's the rice. Yum. Now we're gonna follow with the steak. Okay. Now we're gonna take our steak. Then you're gonna put it in one corner. Okay. Just like this. Same with the rest of the other side. Take one side, you're gonna divide this evenly so everybody gets even amount of steak. Of course, we don't want bickering. <laughs> <laughs> Although when you're at home, you can do whatever you want. Mind you, this is just a way of plating. So plating a plate, obviously more appealing to the eye when you first dig in, but also, it is, I feel, an artistry as well. It is. Plating, plating is fun, you know? You want to have fun with it, make it look nice. Call it Picasso. Picasso, you know? there you go. And then we're going to do the chicken next. Put chicken right here. It's like a barbecue mix plate in the making. Mm-hmm. It's right. starting to come back together. I like it. So is there a reason why we put the chicken and steak in two separate corners? Uh, so you, Say like you, you, you want to eat all your chicken first before you want to eat your steak first. You can like kind of like pick, pick at it and say like, oh, okay, I want I want to eat all my chicken first. So mm. it's all in one corner. You can see visibly like it's right right there, you know. Okay. So then, it's it's kind of like okay, I, I know where where what is. Okay. And then. Kind of have like a plan of action of where I'm yeah. gonna eat. <laughs> okay. So that's that. All right, last but not least, our salad. Cucumber, tomato, lime juice, Goya corn oil, a little bit of salt, mm -hmm. pepper, a little bit of freshness added to the dish. Oh yeah. So. 
Is it weird that I'm more excited for the salad? <laughs> <laughs> just looks so refreshing. Sure. It has like that refreshing feel, you know? You have mm -hmm. like something heavy like the fried rice, the, the meats. Yeah, you need something to offset off like all of balance it. Balance everything together. Absolutely. So we're gonna plate, plate it in between the, the both meats? proteins. Okay. So you get cucumbers, tomatoes, and try to get a bite of every single dish in Absolutely. one. Absolutely. So you get the acidity, you got the sweetness from the cobby marinade on, on the glaze for the chicken. Then you just to... Spoon is giving me a hard time right now, <laughs> but it's okay. Here, last plate. Last plate. All tomatoes. All tomatoes. More tomatoes. More tomatoes than anything, but that's okay. Tomatoes is good. Tomatoes are good. Yeah. Big fan. Cucumbers. There we go. Wow, okay. look at that. This is where the magic happens. Okay. You have some of the cobby marinade you have left in the sauce pot. This, you're going to mix it again just a little bit, and then you're going to glaze it right on top of the steak. Okay. So that has a little bit of steak flavor on top of, uh, a little bit of a cobby flavor on top of the steak as well. Nice. So you, you have that spicy, you have the savoriness of the um, sesame oil and then the saltiness of the soy. Okay. And then this is our finely chopped green onions as garnish. Nice. Just wanna sprinkle it Mostly everywhere. Okay. You have a little freshness to everything. A little bit of that 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 green onion, scallion flavor in every bite. Yes. Absolute favorite. This is a gorgeous dish. I think it's perfect for summertime. I think it is a light but also hearty and refreshing dish that you made here. Good. Well done. Okay. Pair this with our sangria and you got a you got a good night. Are you ready? Ready to dig in. Let's go. Mm. Oh my gosh. This is what I've been waiting for. This is, the longanisa is... The longanisa is perfect. Mm -hmm. Especially with the green onions. It is... It has that balance, right? Mm -hmm. It has that... Oh, oniony taste. I know it's silly to say, but it, it's really good. I, I miss barbecue mixed plates, and I've never had one quite like this one. Thank you, Chef Thomas, for kicking knowledge to us about this wonderful meal. I've never had a barbecue mixed plate quite like this one. It's very unique, and Thank I you. love the taste, the flavors, the colors. It's amazing. Thank you to all the sponsors. Goya, Imusa, and Dagari. And I also want to say thank you to our virtual realm out there. Thank you so much for watching. We really hope that you enjoyed this video. We hope that you cooked along with us. And if you got confused at any point of the way, don't worry, we'll be sending you this video. Well, I'm Asia Jade. I'm Chef Thomas. Yep. And this is la la la. la, la. Oh, this is amazing. <laughs> <laughs>